Hey, how's it going? In helping my friends and students apply to jobs, one of the most frequent questions I get is about resumes, which makes sense. They're one of the most important parts of an application. And I wanted to do a deep dive walking through uh, the process or some of the things you should think about when you're creating a resume. I originally thought of making a, a Fiverr account, and there are a few, there are many uh, Fiverr accounts which will help you work on your resume. But I thought it might be better just to dedicate my time once to explaining sort of the process I go through uh, when I'm reviewing a resume or, or, or updating it. And then hopefully you can derive from that process a series of steps and things to keep in mind when you work on your resume in such a way that you'll be able to make one completely on your own. So that's the hope. Um, let's go through kind of the attributes of a standout resume. Uh, with respect to, also, sorry, by the way, uh, link in the description to the blog post and feel free to leave a comment there or under this YouTube video if you have any questions concerning your resume or you want me to take a look at it, anything I could do to help, I'd be happy to do so. Okay, so standouts of a standout, excuse me, attributes of a standout resume, what to write. Well, it's important that we keep it to one page. Uh, you've probably heard that, but it's also important we keep it to one role. And this is actually something I see pretty common in the games industry where it's not uncommon for a candidate to have many adjacent skills. So for example, you might be really good at programming and really good at designing at the same time. Well, if you are seriously interested in pursuing careers in both of those fields, then you should create a resume that's dedicated to programming and a resume that's dedicated to designing. When you use both of those titles to describe yourself in the same resume, it comes across uh, kind of as someone who's a little confused and maybe still ha needs time to figure out where they're gonna specialize. Um, there's a whole bunch of uh, disciplines which fall somewhere in between. So for example, a gameplay engineer is someone who engages with design but is certainly doing it from an engineering perspective. So maybe one of those roles might be a good fit for you. But at the end of the day, you do need to choose one role and kind of secure that title for yourself in order to come across as confident in those abilities when you're, when you're in the application. So choose one role. Um, text should be in bullet points. Avoid prose at all costs and keep things as concise as possible. The color should be minimal, and uh, if you're going to use images, they should also be minimal as a way to guide the viewer. Uh, I would avoid including portraits, um, a picture of yourself. People might judge that, and generally it's better to, to leave that out. There are some countries where it's almost required for you to have a picture of yourself on the resume, but the United States is uh, pretty decided in, in asking candidates to exclude that. It doesn't seem to be a good idea usually. Um, you want to highlight skills uh, as you mention the projects that involve them. So that's really the best way to approach skills. It's a pretty common question because we'll see sometimes on resumes uh, just a list of skills on the side or even sometimes we'll see like, you know, circle how many bubbles uh, are, are your competency of that skill. Generally, you're going to want to avoid those frameworks unless it's some way to pull a little iconography into your uh, resume. It's nice if, if you don't have any other visuals and it's just text. Um, but for the most part, if you're gonna reference a skill, we wanna know why you're qualified to that skill. And so it's much better to find a project-based approach on a resume. And then if you have a project that says, you know, solo developed Java application, well then I know you're skilled in Java. And that's a much better way to do it than to have some arbitrary three out of five skill in Java, you know, at the bottom of the resume. You wanna have a project associated to each of those skills you purport to hold. I would avoid including the GPA unless you're a new graduate and it's really impressive. But for the most part, especially in the games industry, a GPA is just not relevant and doesn't need to be included. Um, a lot of people forget that resumes today are pretty much solely digital objects. It's very rare that you're going to hand someone a resume, maybe in a career fair. I can't really think of another example. Um, and since you're going to be emailing them this resume, it's really important that if you're going to reference a project, that you link it within the resume. They should be able to get really excited about a project and then click on it and immediately go to that page of your portfolio um, or, or learn more about the project somehow online. We'll talk about portfolios another day, but they're also a very important piece uh, of being a modern programmer email address as well, and we don't need anything beyond that. So I would avoid including your phone number and address unless you're applying for a position where that's relevant. 
Um, some things to keep in mind when you're writing down these details are to try and, wherever possible, reference numerical results. What that means is to say I increased downloads versus I increased downloads by 10% um, from quarter one to quarter two, the latter one is way more impactful because we have an actual number that we can crunch and uh, sort of gauge the, the, the accomplishment with respect to something. If you just say, I helped customers, we don't really know how much you helped them or, or if you even made an impact at all, right? So it's always better to have a number associated with your achievement when possible. In general, we want to focus on those achievements rather than responsibilities, and that's a recurrent theme in pretty much all resume advice I'd give. Um, we want to focus on what did you achieve versus what were you responsible for, okay? Um, keep that in mind. And then finally, avoid using passive verbs wherever possible. We do want to find those punchy, concise, powerful verbs. So something like observed or participated is certainly not as powerful as designed, implemented, or even led. Uh, those are all much more powerful verbs if we could use them. So I also included a, uh, an example of my resume, which uh, uses a lot of pictures in order to highlight uh, some of the more well-known teams I've worked on. Uh, I also included here a reference for freesumes.com. This is actually a really good place to find templates if you're building your resume from scratch. You want to get a little design sense behind them, so you click Browse Templates here. And what's really nice about this is you'll be able to download the Word document and directly edit it. Okay, so if one of these, you know, you find it exciting, then you could download it and immediately start editing it. Okay, and then just uh, two quick tips before we jump into case studies. The first is the long one page. Now, as I said before, it's really important we keep that resume to one page. Otherwise, um, it just looks bad. It looks like we failed to <laughs> fit it on one page, essentially. Um, and so there are some exceptions for when you might want to have more than one page, but if this is, uh, you know, and, and the only exception I can honestly think of is if you're going to list references in an academic setting. So for example, if you're a researcher and you want to list all the papers you worked on, it might be relevant to include an extra page for that. But for the most part, especially in game development, I really can't think of a good reason to have more than one page. But let's say you're really close. And on a standard eight and a half by 11 inch piece of paper, you just can't fit your resume. Well, then I do have a little bit of a trick for you. And that's if you're designing in a Microsoft Word, you could go into file um, settings. There's some settings here. Let me see. I think it's in here. It is layout. You go to layout, then you go to margins, then you go to custom margins. And here, if you go into paper, you could change the height. So let's say I'm, I'm working on Melissa's resume here, and oh man, I'm really close to fitting it. I just need a little more vertical space. We could actually bump the height up. Okay, let's let's bring that to 12 and a half inches. You know, you probably wouldn't need to do that much, but and then check it out. I've got this extra space at the bottom here. Okay, so that's pretty sneaky, but it's a really effective method if you're that close to getting it to fit on one page. And what's great about it is the recruiter, you know, the robot, they're just going to have to scroll a little bit more. And they're very unlikely to realize it's not 11 inches, but maybe 12 inches or something like that. So if you are having trouble, definitely try to squeeze it into one page. If you can't, make the page a little bit bigger before you're considering adding a new page. Okay, uh, the next tip, uh, I've already uh, alluded to this, but if you have multiple pages, disciplines that you're interested in have a different resume customized to each one of those. You don't want a resume that's purporting that you're two different people at the same time. It should really be focused on one discipline at a time. Awesome. So I then included two case studies here, uh, one for my friend Scott and one for my sister Melissa, which show you the left-hand side and the right-hand side of different ways that I work to kind of reimagine these uh, resumes. So for example, um, I, I think with both of these resumes, you're going to see that I put a lot of attention into just without looking at the words at all, just the visual design of these resumes. You want a resume that's going to pop. You want a resume that's going to look hopefully beautiful um, because it is, it's a visual design at the end of the day. Um, also important is I have the name and then I have a very strong title under it. And now 
if you don't currently hold this title, that's okay. That's the title you're applying for. Scott Mulligan wasn't a developer relations coordinator, but he wanted to be one. He was applying to be one. And putting that title on the resume before you have the title is just one more way to kind of for people to see you in that light and to see, oh yeah, Scott Mulligan, yeah, he's a developer relations coordinator and he could be ours. So I think that's a great way to do that. Um, the other thing which I struggled with in both of these resumes, and it might be the case for you as well, is both of these candidates, while they had a lot of experience, it was experience in many different areas. And some of that wasn't directly applicable to the job they were applying for. So for example, Scott had done a lot of uh, work with helping people uh, and children specifically with special needs and that really wasn't relevant to his work as a developer relations coordinator but if you feel like that's a really important part of your story um, the profile or what I listed here as the objective might be a nice way to summarize that and to kind of put your myriad of experiences into a certain context that the recruiter could better understand um, so that's just another way to, to use that and then finally, I'd like to say that within the experience sections, it's important that we headline in a very clear way to read your title, the date, and who you worked for. That's really important. I find that if I have to look into the bullet points to understand what you did, um, I'm going to have a hard time. Okay, basically the title should be what did you it should convey in you know two or three words what you did head of community okay so he's leading the online community for this game got it that that's really where you want it <laughs> basically you want to get all your responsibilities conveyed with that two or three words that way you could focus these bullet points on however many achievements you were able to garner so for example a million downloads and fourteen thousand reviews that's what should be taking up the space of the bullet points, not uh, manage the community. Um, that should all be kind of conveyed by the title itself. Okay, and you could read a little deeper into these two uh, case study examples. I think it'd be useful just to kind of see the wording on these things, specifically how I phrase strong verbs.